This is Dr. Clayton Lane. This talk will be about meniscal tears. What is a meniscus? It's positioned between the femur, seen here, and the tibia. And it's this gasket, which I call it, uh, between those two bones. And what's the role of the meniscus? Well, it supports about half of the body weight. And the reason is, what you're essentially looking at in the knee is a curved surface of the femur coming in contact with a relatively flat surface of the tibia. So you can see if that's all there was in the knee, then there would be a tremendous amount of force coming through this one point where the two surfaces contact. However, what we really have is the so-called gasket or meniscus, which allows this round surface to conform with the flat sur surface and therefore distributes the weight throughout the knee. The meniscus is designed that way meaning there's fibers running from one end to the other providing a hoop type support so that when the pressure is placed down on top of the meniscus it can support that body weight. The anatomy of the meniscus, the medial meniscus is more C-shaped and the lateral meniscus is more circular. You see that somewhat in this diagram here. The medial meniscus is C-shaped, the lateral more circular. And here's a uh, cadaver specimen of the same thing, medial meniscus, lateral meniscus. Between here is the ACL and PCL. The outer third of the meniscus is where all the blood flow is. That's going to be really important in determining the treatment of meniscal tears. You can see the blood vessels here have been filled with a, a black substance so that you can see it. Um, and here you can see in the outer third, again, there's a high concentration of blood vessels. Therefore, a tear in this area is going to heal fairly well. In contrast, if you look at the inner third of the meniscus seen here, there's no blood vessels. So you can imagine that a tear here is not going to heal very well and that is actually the case. The gray area is what we call the red-white zone in the middle where there's a variable amount of blood supply and tears in this area can heal but they usually require some kind of blood stimulation in order to do that. Additionally you see that the nerves um, are concentrated peripherally at the ends of the meniscus. The reason that's important is because the tear in this area doesn't necessarily hurt the patient however when the tear catches in the joint and pulls on the end of the meniscus, that's when a patient gets pain and uh, what we describe as giving way symptoms. Clinically, the patient will complain of pain on one side of the knee, usually, particularly with knee flexion. And again, that giving way symptomatology where they're walking along, feel a sharp pain, and their knee goes out from underneath them. They may experience catching in the knee as well. And then on physical examination, I'm going to look at tenderness over the medial meniscus along the joint line, something called the McMurray's test, and see if the patient has a block to motion as well. Diagnosis on MRI in order to understand the MRI image, I think it's helpful to look at this uh, diagram. And what we're going to do is take one slice through the knee represented by this blue line and you can see that we're going to cut through the posterior horn of the meniscus and the anterior horn of the meniscus and those are going to look like triangles uh, on the MRI image. So the image that we looked for at previously with the rel relatively round surface of the femur, the flat surface of the tibia, with two triangle areas of meniscus representing the anterior and posterior horns, is what we'll see on our MRI image. And you see that here. Round surface of the femur, relatively flat surface of the tibia, anterior horn of the meniscus, and posterior horn of the meniscus with an actual tear through it. Tears don't come in one shape or size. Here we see some of the types of tears that you can see inside the knee. A horizontal tear is essentially a split that runs along the fibers of the meniscus. A longitudinal tear is similar. It's in the same plane except for it goes through and through from top to bottom. This is an important type of uh, tear because this is often a repairable meniscus tear whereas horizontal tears usually are not. Degenerative tears, that's really when the meniscus just wears out over time. We said it supports 50% of the body weight, so obviously over time it's going to start to wear out, and that's what we see here, and this type of tear is not repairable. 
Moving on to the flap type tear, you can see that here arthroscopically, a uh, flap of tissue is entrapped in the joint. You can imagine how that's going to pull when the patient bends their knee, causing pain and causing them to give way. This is an irreparable type of repair, excuse me, a type of tear. And then finally, the radial tear. This is an in-between tear, meaning sometimes it's repairable and sometimes it's not. And it's essentially a tear from the inner border of the meniscus to the outer border. So again, longitudinal tears, radial tears, sometimes repairable, usually the others are not. One type of tear bears uh, mentioning, this is a special type of tear called a bucket handle tear. This is essentially when a longitudinal tear extends far enough around the meniscus that the meniscus becomes unstable and a portion of it flips uh, across the medial condyle or one of the condyles on the knee and becomes entrapped so that there's usually a block to motion. Here you see an arthroscopic picture of that. The meniscus is flipped over the condyle and this patient actually couldn't extend their knee fully and that was their primary complaint. Non-surgical treatment of meniscus tears are reserved for tears that are small, less than eight millimeters and tears with no locking symptoms and obviously they have to improve with physical therapy. If they don't, then surgery may be considered. Surgical treatment involves partial meniscectomy. Uh, usually that's reserved for the tears of the white-white zone as we mentioned previously. You can see that there's no blood flow in this area so if this is torn, a good solution for that to prevent the symptoms is just to go ahead and trim that out. That does increase the contact forces in the knee some, but not to a significant amount that would cause arthritis. Here's the setup for a knee arthroscopy and a medial uh, meniscus, uh, excuse me, meniscectomy. Um, here you see that there, there usually involves two incisions, only about a centimeter in length. Uh, on either side of the patella tendon. We're able to insert a camera through one of these incisions and instruments through the other and perform our work. Here you see the operating room with two high definition screens, one for the surgeon to look at and one for the assistant to look at. You can actually see in the background here, interestingly, this is a bucket handle type tear, which would actually be repaired in many cases rather than excised. So here we have a video of a partial meniscectomy. There you see with an arthroscopic biter, I'm removing a portion of the meniscus. And what I've done is I've removed the meniscal tear and now I'm beveling it back to a smooth rim so that the meniscus no longer becomes entrapped in the joint, which you can see there. Here you see an arthroscopic shaver coming into view and I'll use that to remove any fragments of meniscus as well as smooth up the edges until I'm happy with the resection. Another option for treatment of meniscal tears is obviously repair. And with this, we're talking about the red-red zone depicted here. The blood supply, again, is these uh, black areas. These are blood vessels. If a tear occurs in this region, if we can get it to stay in place, then it'll often heal. This is often uh, most appropriate with longitudinal type tears as you can see that they're structurally stable once uh, stitches are placed in. Here's how that's done. I do an inside out technique for most cases. Uh, it is able to be performed all arthroscopically and all inside. However, the all inside devices are fraught with problems and complications and the gold standard is still an inside out repair. And what's done there is a needle will be inserted along the trajectory shown here. A separate incision is made on the back of the knee and that needle is caught. You then pass through the other end of the stitch, tie those down outside the capsule, and what you get is a repair that looks something like this, which is extremely strong and has an extremely high potential for healing. Here we have a video of a bucket handle meniscus tear. There you see the meniscus entrapped around the medial femoral condyle, and I'll trace out the meniscus and the anterior horn there. First thing I have to do is reduce the meniscus back into place. There you see me pushing with a probe. Now it's back in position on the other side of the femoral condyle where it should be. So what we'll do is an inside out repair. Again, that involves passing a needle through the meniscus and out another incision on the back of the knee to an insistent. There you see one uh, stitch is already in place. Now I'm passing my second pass and you'll see as the assistant pulls the uh, slack out of the system here. You'll see the stitch will pull the meniscus down into position 
against the posterior capsule and then when I tie that down we have a very strong repair. So in summary there are many types of meniscus tears all with different treatments and prognosis, age, activity level and comorbidities and the ability to comply with rehab are all important factors into determining their treatment. Thank you.